So this equation by itself is not enough to really solve for the boundary layer because we don't know vi, so we can't, uh, without knowing vi, we don't know the growth of delta star, right? We know du e dx usually if we know the outside flow. But like this is not, this is just relating two terms together. It's not sufficient to solve for delta star. But magic happens when you not only consider the mass conservation equation, but also the momentum conservation equation. In particular, we are only looking at the x-directional momentum conservation equation. Again, think of think of the wall. We have a boundary layer going in. We have a boundary layer coming out. We choose the same. Um, we choose the same control volume as before. Okay. But this time, we have two different governing equations. One for the viscous fluid. One for the inviscous fluid. What's the difference? Viscosity. The viscosity, right? One has right. zero viscosity, but all the other terms are the same, right? So for the for the uh, velocity, we have u. We have uh, uh, let's see the I want to write it as uh, uh, u times du dx. Uh, no, let's let's write it in in uh, in conservation form. So d dx of u square. That's the flux in the x directional momentum right plus uh, d dy of u times v right so that's the momentum flux in the y direction plus d p dx okay is equal to my viscosity times Oh, I should be using partial here because uh, I am considering a two-dimensional flow field, partial P, partial X. Here we have partial square U, partial Y square, right? Because we are considering things in the boundary layer, the other derivative, dx, dy, can be ignored safely. And the inviscous flow field have the same thing. Have U, uh, ui square plus partial partial y ui vi now this is pi right equal to what zero right i have no viscous effect on the uh, inviscid flow so first task is can we relate p to pi in a thin layer equation So we know for the viscous pressure, right? We did the derivation using a scale, using like dimensionality analysis to say that the pressure inside the boundary layer is pretty much constant when you travel along the y direction, right? How about here? Same, right? It's also constant because all, all analysis assumes that, like, ba it's based on the streamlines are pretty much parallel to the wall, right? And the curvature is small. Oh, uh, sorry, the curvature is large compared to the thickness of the boundary layer. And this is also true for the inviscous flow. Okay, so these two are the same. This motivates us to subtract these two equations. Okay. So when we subtract these two equations, what we get is a partial partial x of ui square minus u square uh, plus partial partial y of ui vi minus uv plus u times this is equal to zero. Okay, and we again wants to use the uh, wants to use Gauss's theorem. So we are going to write this as the divergence of something. 
So how can we write this as divergence of something? So divergence of f is equal to zero. Now what is f? Has to have an x and y component, right? So can I write this equation as the divergence of a vector equal to zero? Yeah, uh, x term is ui squared minus u squared. X term is ui squared minus u squared, and the y term? ui dr minus u d plus mu du by dr. Yes. Right, I can write the derivative, a uh, second order derivative as, as the derivative of derivative. Right, so that way I can write a vector f and say the divergence of that f is equal to zero. Okay, next we use what? Not Stokes theorem, but the other one, right? We use Gauss's theorem to convert this into a uh, into surface integrals. So this is equal to zero. Uh, the integration over this omega is also going to be equal to zero. That says that the integral on the left from zero to infinity ui minus u square and you take a negative sign again dy right so this is the x directional flux it is integrated over y the y directional flux is going to be integrated over x because it's the y normal so it has a y normal so yeah. oh ui squared yes thank you dy now i need to consider the y directional flux so the first one is at x1 and second one is at x2 yes okay uh, i need to subtract integration from x1 to x2 of the y vector ui vi minus uv plus nu partial u partial y dx at y equal to 0 plus the same thing at y equal to infinity but what is that same thing at y equal to infinity can somebody tell me Zero. zero again, right, because the ui vi agrees with u and v, and outside viscous forces or du dy is basically zero, right? Well, at least the, the new times du dy is almost zero, right? The viscous effect is small, so plus zero is equal to zero. And last time in the mass conservation, we eliminated some of the terms even at y equal to zero by the boundary condition of the viscous fluid. Can we do the same thing here? Which term becomes zero? UV. Minus uv term becomes zero because at y equal to zero, both u and v are equal to zero. Right. Okay. So now we also get something similar. So as a result of this derivation, my integral defect of momentum taking difference between x1 and x2 is equal to the integral over x1 and x2 on the wall of ui vi plus nu times or plus nu times du dy is basically let me call it wall shear stress tau where tau is defined as nu times partial u partial y at y equal to zero, right? Okay, so this gets me, if now I again take x1 and x2 to be infinitesimally different, what do you think I would get? d by dx of another integral, right? This is the integral de facto of u square is equal to is equal to ui vi 
plus tau at the wall, right? Okay, this seems to give me another boundary condition for UIVI, right? We already had a boundary condition. So, so UI at the wall is like UE, right? So, so that seems to be give me another boundary condition for VI at the wall. So let's use it. So let's combine these together. My original, my mass conservation equation tells me that VI at the wall equal dm dx. So this is UI is basically UE at the wall and the VI is equal to dm dx plus tau. 